Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now every year we expect smartphones that are more power efficient and have greater performance compared to the smartphones of the year before. But to do that, we need new CPU designs and new GPU designs. And to that end, ARM has just released its details of its newest CPU design, the Cortex-A76. So if you wanna find out what is the Cortex-A76 and what will it mean for smartphones of 2019, please let me explain. Okay, so the way it works is this, ARM is a design company. They don't actually physically make any chips. They design CPU cores and GPU cores, and then they pass those designs over to companies like Qualcomm, or to Samsung, or to Huawei, or to MediaTek, and they use them in the SOCs that we actually find in our smartphones. And last year's CPU was the Cortex-A75, and this year's new design is the Cortex-A76. Now the Cortex-A76 is quite an interesting design. There are some significant changes compared to the Cortex-A75. So let's have a look at some of the main characteristics. And the first thing to notice is the Cortex-A76 is not an evolution of the Cortex-A75. It's a brand new design with a brand new microarchitecture. However, of course, it still uses dynamic, which means there are high uh, performance cores, which will be coupled with a uh, high energy efficient cores. And here is the key figure that uh, ARM are telling us. There's two times the performance boost for laptops and that's compared to the current performance, and that really means compared to the Snapdragon 835 and the Cortex-A73. And the reason they're mentioning laptops, of course, is that now we are in the era of Windows ARM-based laptops. Although ARM are particularly underlining laptop performance, whichever way you look at it, a doubling in performance from the Cortex-A73 to the Cortex-A76 is a major achievement. Now, when you come to compare the Cortex-A76 with the Cortex-A75, we see some significant changes here. So this is talking about a Cortex-A76 uh, clocked at 3 gigahertz with a 7 nanometer process node compared to uh, this year's Cortex-A75 at 2.8 gigahertz at 10 nanometers. First of all, the Cortex-A76 has a 35% performance increase. It has a 40% efficiency increase. And when it comes to uh, AI and to machine learning, which of course is the kind of the keyword at the moment, they're saying there is a four times uh, performance increase. And here we have some interesting comparisons using Geekbench for the Cortex-A73, the Cortex-A75, and the Cortex-A76. Of course, they are also clocked at different frequencies, 2.45, 2.8, and 3 gigahertz. However, we can see that the Cortex-A76 is again producing significant increases. And there's a 35% increase we see there from the Cortex-A75 to the Cortex-A76. But it's interesting to note this 2.5x increase in floating points. So ARM have really put a lot of effort into improving the floating point calculations that we get in this year's processor. Now we also mentioned increases in performance and in uh, power efficiency. On the left here, you can see that if you are running the core, a single A76 core at 750 milliwatts, then you can actually do 40% more work, 40% more performance in exactly the same power envelope. So that means it can do things 40% quicker and your battery doesn't go down any faster than it would compared to what the A75 does. And the other way you can look at that is if you want to have the same level of performance as you do with today's Cortex-A75 processors, then actually the A76 will use 50% less power. So you can actually have the same kind of you know, Geekbench scores as you get today, but your battery will drain much, much less. So that is a significant uh, improvement. So let's move on to look a little bit at the internals of the Cortex-A76. Now, the first thing to note about the Cortex-A76, as I mentioned earlier, is that this is a new microarchitectural design. And ARM are confident that each year they're going to be able to take this initial design with this new architecture and tweak it some more to get better performance and even better uh, power efficiency. But starting with this first generation of this new uh, architecture, we are seeing significant changes compared to the Cortex-A75. Now you might be wondering how long does it take to do a process of design? Well, ARM have given us some information here. They started the initial thoughts, the initial scribblings on bits of paper about the Cortex A76 happened four years ago. So that just shows you how complicated these CPUs are and how much effort ARM put into tweaking every single tiny little bit of it to eke out as much power as they can. 
So I'm going to show you a fairly complicated picture of the internals of the A76. And even this really is a simplified, very simplified version, but it just shows us how a CPU is put together. And so we can see here there are three distinctive parts. There's the part at the beginning, which is called the front end, which is how the instructions are fetched from memory and how they are ready to go down the pipeline so that they can be executed. And then you have this kind of decode part that works out what the instruction is meant to do. Is this a floating point instruction? Is this an integer instruction? Does this instruction need to access the memory? And all that gets sorted out in the uh, decode part. And then after that, you have the execution part. And so that we can get instruction uh, level parallelism, there are different parts to this execution because while you're executing, for example, a floating point operation, you can also be halfway through executing the next integer operation, which generally is much simpler. Now, the key takeaway here about the front end part is that the branch predictor and the instruction fetch are actually decoupled from each other. And what I mean by decoupled, what it means is that the branch predictor works independently to the instruction fetch. And what that means is when the branch predictor is actually working out where the program is going to next, predicting the jumps, predicting the branches, it can actually fetch those instructions from memory, work out what's going on, and by the time they get to the instruction fetch stage of the pipeline, they're actually already in the cache which means it's the branch predictor that's done the hard work of actually fetching them from the memory and working out where they should be. And what ARM have done is they make the branch predictor work at twice the bandwidth than the instruction fetch, which means that while there's all these things going on with memory latencies and working out what goes on next, the instruction fetch is always being fed by the branch predictor at double the bandwidth. And when the branch predictor has actually filled up its kind of internal queue and said, hey, I've got nothing more to do, it just waits until the instruction fetch kind of goes through the instructions one at a time. So this decoupling has been able to remove a lot of the latency that you can find in these early parts of the pipeline. Now, if that went a bit over your head a bit, just know this, they've made it quicker to get the right instructions out of the memory and into the CPU. And of course, that's vital for performance. And then when we look at the execution core, look at this, there is a eight independent issue queues which are power optimized for the attached execution pipes. Some things take longer in a processor than others. So an integer calculation, one plus one, is maybe a lot simpler than kind of multiplying something by pi, for example. So when you have this instruction level parallelism, it means that if you've got, let's say, a sequence of uh, integer operations, and before that you've got a mathematical operation, you can kind of start the uh, mathematical operation off, then you can go ahead and kind of get working on those integer things, and things start to work in parallel, and that's called instruction level parallelism. So as a summary of what these microarchitecture changes uh, managed to get for us is there's a 25% more integer instructions per cycle than the Cortex A75, that is significant. There's a 35% higher floating point performance. And here is the really important one, why ARM have been talking about laptops, there is a 90% higher memory bandwidth. Now, memory bandwidth is very important both in smartphones and in laptops, and a 90% increase is uh, very, very interesting. So what does that mean for you and for me? Well, basically it means that in 2019, we're gonna see flagship smartphones using the Cortex A76, and we're probably gonna hear some announcements about the processors that power those smartphones towards the end of 2018, so maybe just six months from now. So for 2019, we're looking at greater performance, significantly greater performance, better memory bandwidth, we're looking at better power efficiency, uh, and then we're gonna see a push into the Windows ARM laptop area. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what companies like Qualcomm and Samsung and Huawei can do with the Cortex A76. So my name is Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. I really hope you enjoyed this overview of the Cortex A76. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, you know what we like to ask you, please subscribe to our channel, please share this video on social media, and I will be reading your comments below to see what you think about the Cortex A76. Well, one last thing to say, don't forget to go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.